the past paper week 25 back to non-calculator this week for foundation and all the odd numbers so these are all the topics that we're going to do in this half past paper 40 marks out of 80 and those are the sparks codes if you do want them if you have access to sparks okay question number one write the following numbers in order of size start with the smallest number when you are comparing decimals you might find it helpful to write them so that you're lining up the decimal uh, places so 0 0.4 0 0.02, 0 0.37, 0 0.152, and 0 0.2. Because what we're going to do is we're going to look at the ones column. Okay, they're all zeros. So that doesn't help me decide which is smaller and which is bigger. Then we're going to move over to the tenths column, because that's the next biggest column. And we're looking for the smallest number. And that's going to be the one with a zero. So 0 0.02 is going to be your smallest. Then it's going to be the... Um, one with the one in that column so that's 0 0.152 then it's going to be the two so 0 0.2 then it's going to be the three 0 0.37 and then it's going to be 0 0.4 and what you also might find helpful with that method is adding in zeros to make all of those numbers the same length just might help you to visualize the place value a little bit better and to be able to compare those values if you had two numbers the same in that column you'd need to go over to the next column to check and that's how you would write them in order question number three here's a list of numbers 3 5 7 12 15 18 and 20 from the list write down a fact factor of 10. Now factors are numbers that fit into that number an exact number of times. So what goes into 10 an exact number of times it is going to be 5 because 5 times 2 is 10. So 5 is a factor of 10. Some students would write 20. So that would be the common incorrect answer there. 20 is a multiple of 10 it's in the 10 times table. So if you put 20, it's not a factor, but it's a multiple of 10. Okay, question number 5a, work out three times five, add seven. Now, this is a bid mass question. We're looking at the order of operations, and we know that with bid mass, brackets, indices, divide and multiply are on a level, and add and subtract are on the same level. We've got multiplication here, so we need to make sure that we do this part of the sum, before we then add on the 7. So that's going to be 15, add 7, and that would be 22 as your answer there. For part B, we're working out 2 cubed, and 2 cubed means 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and we're timesing that by 2, and that gives us an answer of 8 there. Question part C, write brackets in this statement to make it correct. So we want 7 times 2 add 3 to make 35. Now, if I was to do it just as it is at the minute, we know from bid mass, this is the bit we would do first. 7 times 2 is 14, and then adding 3 doesn't make 35, it makes 17. So that's no good. What we want to do is make it make 35, and we can do that by putting brackets around this part. 2 add 3 is 5. And then 7 times 5 is 35. So that's where the brackets would need to go in order to make that correct. Okay, question number 7, and we've got a pictogram. There are only apple trees, cherry trees, pear trees, and plum trees in an orchard. The pictogram shows information about the numbers of apple trees, cherry trees, and pear trees in the orchard. There's a total of 30 trees in the orchard. Complete the pictogram. So we can see from the key over here that one square like this represents four trees. So if you would find it helpful, you can always divide that up into four, and we see that each quarter represents one tree. So this is is four this is another four and this is another four which means there are 12 apple trees for cherry we've got four and then we have an extra one we know that one quarter is worth one tree so that's five all together and for pear I've got four and then this is two quarters or a half so we know that for each of those dots there we'd get one tree each so this is worth two so we've got six pear trees now adding that together 12 add five add 6, that's 17 add 6, so 23, and then we know that we've got 30, take away that 23, so 7 trees left. And so we're going to draw one box for 4, and then we need to do another 3, and that's going to look like this. So it doesn't matter your orientation, you might have done it 
that way up, for example. Um, but we need to make sure that it's three quarters of that square to represent three. And so we've got four and three, and that makes seven. And then it adds up to the total of 30 trees for the orchard. And that's it for three marks. OK, question number nine. G is nine and H is four. Work out the value of 2G, add 3H. Well, 2G means two lots of G. And 3H means three lots of H. When we write things next to each other like that, it means they're multiplying together. So I'm going to do two lots of G, but we're told that G is nine. So I can change that G to be nine. Two lots of nine and three lots of H, but we're told that H is four. So three lots of four, and that is 18 add 12. And 18 add 12 gives us an answer of 30 there for two marks. Question number 11, here are some fractions. One of these fractions is not equivalent to three quarters. Which fraction? Okay, so with equivalent fractions, what we do to the top, we also need to do to the other, either multiplying or dividing. Let's look at nine and 12. Both nine and 12 are in the three times table. If I divide the top by three and I divide the bottom by three, I get three over Four. So that one is equivalent to three quarters. For this next fraction, six and eight are both in the two times table. If I divide the top by two and I divide the bottom by two, I get three over four. So that one is equivalent to three quarters. For 18 and 24, they're both in the six times table. If I divide the top by six and I divide the bottom by six, I get three over four. 10 and 16, now they're only both in the two times table. So we can divide the top by two and divide the bottom by two, and that gives me five over eight. So I think that's gonna be our likely candidate here. Let's just check with the last one. They're both in the five times table. So let's divide by five and we get three over four. So there we go. There's only one fraction there that is not equivalent and it's that one. So we're gonna write 10 over 16 on our answer line. You could write five over eight, but 10 over 16 is what the mark scheme would say. So just make the examiner's life easy and let's put the original fraction there. Okay, for part B, we've got to add fractions. Now, when we add fractions, we make the denominators the same. So I'm gonna rewrite these fractions and I'm going to make the denominators, the bottom numbers, the same. To do that, we're looking for a number that's in the 12 times table and the 6 times table. And that's going to be 12. 12 is the first number that's in both of their times tables. So we're going to change them both to be out of 12, and then we can add them. With the first fraction, I don't actually need to do anything. It's already out of 12. With the second fraction, in order to make the denominator 12, I need to multiply it by 2. And then to keep that fraction the same, I also need to multiply the numerator, the top number, by 2. So that becomes 10 over 12. Once you've made the denominators the same, you can then go ahead and add the numerators. So that is 11 twelfths. Can't simplify that. That's your answer for two marks. OK, question number 13. Asmol, Ryan and Kim each played a game. Asmol's score was four times Ryan's score. And Kim's score was half of Asmol's score. Write down the ratio of Asmol's score to Ryan's score to Kim's score. Now, because we are writing a ratio, and ratio can be simplified, same as if they were asking you to write a fraction, fractions can be simplified, you can give them any number of points, because it really doesn't matter. It will cancel down, and it will be okay. So I'm going to look for who I think got the lowest score. And I think that that's probably going to be Ryan, if I'm looking at it. Asmol's score was four times Ryan's score, and Kim's score was half of Asmol's score. Okay, so yeah, I think Ryan's probably got the least. So let's give Ryan one point. Let's say Ryan got one point. In which case, Asmol's score was four times Ryan's score. So Asmol got four points. And then it says Kim's score was half of Asmol's score, so Kim got two points. And then we've got to write the ratio of Asmol, which is four, to Ryan, which is one, to Kim, which is two. And that would be my answer. So you might have given them 10 points and then 40 points and 20, but it doesn't matter what you give them. It would always cancel down. Everything would be in this times table and it would cancel down to four to one to two. So that would be my answer. But if you wrote anything equivalent to that, for example, if you wrote eight to two to four, that would be absolutely fine as well. As long as it was a multiple of that, four to one to two would be my answer there. Question number 15, Shahid is going to use these instructions to make a fizzy drink. Mix five parts of orange juice, 
juice with two parts of lemonade. Shahid thinks that if he has 300 mils of orange juice and 200 mils of lemonade, um, he thinks that he has that, sorry. If Shahid is correct, what is the greatest amount of fizzy drink he can make? So I'm going to draw this out. It's a ratio. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five piles of orange juice to two parts of lemonade. So if he has 300 mils of orange juice, then I would do orange juice on these little lines here. So this is my orange juice over here, and this is my lemonade. Now, whatever I put in each of these little lines has to be the same on all of those lines. If I've got 300 mils of orange juice, I need to do 300 over these five lines. So 300 divided by five is 60. So 60, 60, 60, 60, 60. But then I would also need to do 60 and 60 on these lines as well. Okay, so that would use up all of my orange juice, but I've got a little bit of lemonade left over. Um, if we were to do it the other way, so let's say one, two, three, four, five, one, two. If I was to take the 200 mils of lemonade, I've got to divide that over two parts. So I could have 100 and 100. But look what happens. You've got 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. And that makes 500. And we just don't have that much orange juice. So I can't do that big. But what I can do is what I've done here. 60, 60, 60, 60, 60 on all of the lines. So therefore, the greatest amount of fizzy drink he can make, well, we've got 300 mils of orange juice and we've got 120 mils of lemonade and that keeps the ratio correct. So the biggest amount you can make would be adding those together and that is 420 mils of liquid. Now, Shahid does indeed have 300 mils of orange juice, but he's only got 160 mils of lemonade. Does this affect the greatest amount of fizzy drink he can make? No, it doesn't. We were using 300 mils of orange juice anyway, and that was the limiting factor. If we had a bit more orange juice, we could maybe make a bit more, but we weren't short of um, lemonade. We actually have plenty with 200 and we still can't make any more with 160 because we can see that we've only used 120. So no, we were limited by the orange juice. Um, we only used 120 mil of lemonade. So it didn't make a difference. Having 160 would still mean we've got some left over. Okay, question number 17. Uh, 80 people are asked if they like coffee. 48 of these people are women, so I'm going to put 48 in this circle here. And then we know that if there are 48 women, but 80 people all together, then the rest of those people, I'm going to put 32 here, because these two will need to add to make 80. So the two circles here go back and add to make the number in that circle or oval there. It then says 61 of the 80 people like coffee, but that's a bit tricky because I've got two circles where they like coffee. I've got the women that like coffee and the men that like coffee. So I know that these two circles need to add up to make 61, but I don't know how many to put in each. So I'm just going to leave that there for the minute. It then says eight of the men do not like coffee. So we can go down the men pathway. Eight do not like coffee. So that goes there. That then helps me because if that one is eight, I know that these two ovals need to add to make 32. So this one has to be 24 to make that correct. And once I know that that one's 24, I can then do 61 take away 24. Now remember, if you've got more on the floor and you're subtracting, you need to borrow from next door. 11 take four is seven and five take two is three. So that's gonna be 37 so that these two circles, ovals, add to make 61. And if that one's 37, we can then have a look. We need to make sure that these two add to make 48. So we need another 11 here, that makes 48. And then we could always just double check that those four do add up to make 80. That would be a good way of checking your answers there. One of the people who like coffee is chosen at random. So I'm only picking from the people who like coffee. So that's gonna be these people and these people, which we know adds up to 61. So I'm picking out of 61 people. Find the probability this person is a woman. Well, there are 37 women out of those 61 people that we're choosing from. So it's going to be 37 out of 61. It's quite tricky, that question, because people will do it out of 80, just because there are 80 people asked. But it said we were only picking from the people who like coffee. So it was out of 61, and then we need to look how many of those were women. Okay, question number 19. 
rotate shape A 180 degrees about one zero. So one zero, we're going along the corridor up the stairs. So one zero is this coordinate here. When we rotate, normally we use tracing paper. I don't have that luxury on the iPad, so you're gonna have to bear with me. And I'm gonna do this by using lines. So I am going to rotate this shape and I'm gonna say at the minute, it is three up and three left. Now, if I was to rotate this 180 degrees, what's going to happen? Well, instead of going up three, we're going to go down three. And instead of going a, a left by three, we're going to go right by three. So I know that that corner is now there and we need to go down two instead of going up two, um, right one instead of going left one, down one like that and like that. But you can use tracing paper for that. I just didn't have that luxury. So there we go. That's where that shape would end up. We've rotated it 180 degrees. We don't need to go clockwise or anticlockwise. You could have gone the other way um, because it's 180 degrees. So it wouldn't make a difference which way you go. That's where you should have ended up there for two marks. Question number 21, V squared equals U squared add 2AS. U is 12. A is minus three and S is 18. Work out the value of V. So let's fill in what we know. V squared, we don't know V, that's what we've got to work out, equals 12 squared, because that's U. Add, now 2AS, remember 2AS means two times A times S. When we write letters next to each other, uh, when we write algebra like that, they're multiplying together. So I'm gonna do two times minus three times 18 because we're told that a is minus 3 and we're told that s is 18. Okay let's work this bit out first because they're multiplying together so that's really important. v squared equals, oh I can do this bit as well, 12 squared is 12 times by itself. When you square a number you're timesing it by itself. So 12 times 12 is 144. Add, now 2 times minus 3 is minus 6 and then we need to do minus 6 times 18. So I'm going to do 18 multiplied by 6 6 times 8 is 48, 6 times 1 is 6, add the 4 is 10. So it's minus 6 times 18, so that's going to be minus 108 because you've got one positive and one negative number multiplying together. So I've got 144, add minus 108, and that's going to make a takeaway. When we add a negative number, it takes away, and that leaves us with 36. 144, take away 108, is 36. So V squared is 36. What number squared makes 36? Something times something that makes 36. And you're going to square root to get that. The square root of 36 is 6 because 6 times 6 is 36. So 6 was your answer. You could have also had minus 6 there. Okay, part B, make S the subject of the formula. Now to change the subject of the formula, it's a little bit like solving an equation. We're going to undo the operations until we have that S on its own. So I want this letter on its own. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the other term that's on that side. So let's do our dotted line. What we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. The first thing we're going to do is take U squared away from both sides. That leaves me with V squared minus U squared equals 2AS. Now, what is the relationship between the 2A and the S? How am I going to get that S on its own? We know that they are multiplying together and the opposite of multiplying is to divide. So I'm going to divide this side by 2A and divide this side by 2A. So V squared minus U squared all over 2A equals S and you can flip that round for your answer or you can leave it like that, doesn't matter. V squared minus U squared all divided by 2A. Very tricky that one, definitely grade five. So well done if you got that and if that didn't make sense, definitely add that to your revision list, changing the subject of the formula. Okay, and then we have question number 23. It would take 120 minutes to fill a swimming pool using water from five taps. How many minutes would it take to fill the pool if only three of the taps were used? This is an example of inverse proportion, okay? If you turn on more taps, it's going to take less time. If you have less taps turned on, it's going to take more time. So I'm going to say five taps equals 120 minutes. Always with these questions, it's a good idea to get one tap or one of whatever they're talking about. If we divide the number of taps by five, it's going to take five times longer. So 600 minutes for one tap. But actually, we've got three taps. 
So then if I multiply that by three, three times more taps is going to divide the time by three. So inverse proportion, that's why we're going multiply with one way and divide with the other, because the more taps I have on, the less time it's going to take. So that would be 200 minutes. So 200 would be my answer there. State one assumption you made in working. And the assumption we've made is that all the taps flow at the same rate because if some of them flow quicker, obviously that is going to make a difference. Okay, question number 25, solve the simultaneous equations. Now, when you have simultaneous equations, it is always my advice to make the coefficients, the numbers in front of the y's the same, or whatever letter is there. Um, remember, a y on its own is one y. So I've got one y and three y minus, but we'll deal with that in a minute. And I'm going to make them both the same. So I'm looking for the first number in the one times table and the three times table, and that's going to be three. So I want to make them both three. So I don't need to do anything to that bottom row. I know it says minus, but we're, we're going to go with the number and, and make them both three. And so we need to multiply everything on the top by three, but we're going to leave the bottom row the same. So that is 15x add three y equals 63. Don't forget to multiply that number on the end as well. And then the bottom row, I'm going to keep the same x minus 3y equals 9. Now the signs don't matter in terms of making them the same, but they affect what we're going to do next. So you need to decide whether we're going to add these two equations together or, multi uh, or take away, sorry, and we're going to turn it into a big sum. And we want to cancel these guys out. We want them to go away. So if they were both pluses, then we would take away. And if they were both minuses, we would take away. So if they're the same signs, you're going to subtract. But we want to cancel them out. And if one's positive and one's negative, we're going to add them together because that will cancel them out. So then we're going to end up with 16x because I'm adding these two things together. Adding these together makes nothing. So that's fine. And that equals 72. I now need to find out how many 16s go into 72 to work out what x is. So dividing this side by 16 and dividing this side by 16. Now 16 and another 16 is 32. Another 16 is 48. And another 16 is 64. I've then got another 8 to get up to 72. So that is one, two, three, four lots of 16, and eight is half a lot of 16. So that's 4.5. Quite tricky, that. The other way you could do that is if you do 72 divided by 16, you could simplify that to 36 over 8, because you're dividing the top by 2, dividing the bottom by 2. You could make that 18 over 4, and you could make that 9 over 2 if you just keep simplifying it. And 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. So that's our x, okay? We now know that x is 4.5. And what I'm going to do next is put that value back in. So going back to the very first original equation, I know that 5x's and 1y equals 21. But we now know that x is 4.5. So let's put that there. 5 lots of 4.5 is 4.5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. So 5 carry the 2. 5 times 4 is 20. Add the 2 is 22. And so that is 22.5. 22.5 add y needs to equal 21. And we can see that that's come down by 1.5. So y is minus 1.5. But a very tricky question, very much grade five, that one. So um, hopefully that makes some sense. Simultaneous equations there. Question number 27. Amina has two bags. In the first bag, there are three red balls and seven green balls. In the second bag, there are five red and four green. Amina takes at random a ball from the first bag. She then takes at random a ball from the second bag. Complete the probability tree diagram. Okay, so we know that with each of these branches, they add to make one. We know that there are three red and seven green in the first bag. And this is your first bag here. So if red is three out of 10, because three add seven is 10, then green is seven out of 10. For the second bag, we have these branches here. Now we're not doing it twice. The reason we've got branches here and branches here is because if we come up this pathway, if we take a red out of the first bag, then we're gonna make a choice from the second bag. And if we go up, uh, go down this pathway, sorry, then we're gonna make a choice from the second bag. So we're just giving ourselves an option whether we go this way or 
whether we go this way. We're just giving ourselves that second bag choice. Now, if there are five reds and four greens, it's out of nine. So that's going to be five over nine and four over nine. And again here, five over nine and four over nine. What happens in the first bag, whether we pick red or whether we pick green, doesn't affect the second bag. They're separate bags. So those probabilities are going to stay the same. Work out the probability that Amina takes two red balls. Now, when we do probability trees, if we want this pathway, we want red and then red again, we multiply along those pathways. So I want to do three over 10 times five over nine. And with multiplying fractions, we do the numerator times the numerator, top times top, and the denominator times the denominator. So 10 times nine is 90. So 15 out of 90 is my answer there. Those are both in the five times table. So you could simplify it and make it three over 18, which is one over six. So any of those answers would be absolutely fine. You don't have to simplify though. And 15 over 90 would be absolutely fine for both marks. There we go then, 40 marks. That is half a past paper. All of the even numbers will be on next week's. If you've got any questions about any of those that I've gone through today, please drop me a comment below. And I really hope you found that helpful. Um, I will see you guys next week for week 26.